Hi, Jules. Um, oh, no. Hi. Uh, hey, I'm just wondering, just what was your mindset through three quarters and kind of where the game was going for you and what may have changed in that fourth quarter then? Um, I think I was just focusing on defense, you know. Um, I felt like I got shots early. They didn't go in. Um, and I just stayed patient. You know, I think second half came around and my teammates kept encouraging me. They went to me. Um, and I was able to just get to my spots. And that's kind of what you know, playoffs are about. You know, you got to adjust. And that's what we did. And we were able to get some defensive stops. And the crowd was amazing. I felt off that in energy a lot. So, um, yeah, I mean, shots went in. And I just kept rolling. And they kept encouraging. And we got stops. And that's what. Then also just in like the final minute there, you guys were down one. We had had a timeout and coming out of that timeout. I want to say that you took a three. There was a rebound. Big rebound. Yeah. And then you had a shot. Three. Just what can you take me through that? Yeah, no, that's a huge rebound, um, from Tina. Um, I probably could have took a better shot, but it happens. And mm -hmm. um, Right when we got the rebound, we were all saying, like, we, we wanted to have a dagger. I threw it right to Sue, thinking that she would shoot it. But she's smart, and she wasted mo more time, you know. <laughs> a very smart player. Um, and then we just executed the same play. It was the same exact play we had before. I just took a different look, a little bit more aggressive, and got to the, the paint, I believe, and um, felt a little bit more confident in that area. Team where you have an MVP who just won a key player of the year, but a lot of times you can buzz it late in the game. The, the ball is in your hands. What does that kind of say about the relationship you and Sue have and your ability to kind of play off each other? I mean, we've been playing together, we've known each other for a long time. Um, you know, it's obviously to me, it's an honor to be on the floor with her, to, to be serious um, about everything and, and know that she has the ball late game. I have all the confidence in the world in her and anyone on our team to take those shots and same with, you know, vice versa. Um, you know, like I said, I think late game, everyone was encouraging everybody, like be ready, step up and I'll be able to do that. But uh, she gives me confidence to take shots and I am so confident in her. So um, I appreciate our friendship and us, us being teammates. It's a, it's a privilege. Yeah, so we talk about uh, you and Elena going on, just going back and forth in another epic battle, both of you guys in each for yeah. your team. Um, uh, Elena is really tough to guard and I think and well, all three of us excuse me have talked about it after the game just like you know she hit some really tough shots um, and that's the goal is to try and try and make things difficult try and make her her be more of a facilitator but um, she she rose to the occasion and and we know we had we see her again on Sunday and just trying to be prepared but um, you know it's playoffs I think that anything that happened throughout the regular season you know she was in games out of games things like that everyone is is stepping up to to be their best in these moments because we know um nothing is given to us you know the opportunity we have right now is not going to be the opportunity we have tomorrow and luckily we are in series now but uh, making sure that that we take advantage of you know what we can do in in those 40 minutes on the court now, looking at the future of the WNBA, I thought Kira Austin for them, you know, played really well. And then as he came off the bench, gave you guys a huge lift. And so just kind of yeah. talk about those two young players. Yeah. Um, Shakira Austin, uh, you know, when you get to this point in the season, you're not a, you're not a rookie anymore. She came in and she um, made hustle plays. She got some rebounds, which we would try to, to clean up, but um she understands her spots. And if you can figure that out early in your career in the WNBA, it's definitely going to help you a lot. And I mean, as he came in and, and was just all over the place, you know, things that don't show up on the stat sheet or the box score, uh, the way she was continuing to cut, move, rebound, play defense. Um, that's what we need from her. And, and that's what, we, what we've seen from, from her this season. And she's just continuing to grow every game. Uh, Gabby, you just kind of had your own friends all over um, every aspect of this team. Could you talk about the mindset you had going into this? And second question is, do you ever think of those uh, fast breakaways about just trying to go up and dump one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know yeah. these ones are telling me too. Um, no, I mean, that's just kind of what I want to bring to this team, just reading the flow of the game. Okay, where do I need to be? Uh, me being on 
on cloud allowed me to get my hand on the ball a little bit more get get some more touches get some more deflections uh and yeah you know i i think i've grown really well into my role here i've understood what they're asking me to do what they want from me and just trying to like you said just affect the game in as many ways as i possibly can Elena kind of said it as well tonight. She said, um, we didn't come out with the win, but you had to take a step back and think about how fun that game was. Can you kind of just speak to, uh, you did come out with the victory, but how fun is it to be in a game that pushes you to be better um, kind of every minute with such a tough battle with Washington? Okay, it's fair. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think when we think about it, and we've talked about it before, and I've talked to, to, about it to some of you, um, us in D.C. have been, you know, winning championships in the finals, competing for championships um, almost every single year since probably 2018. Mm -hmm. um, their franchise is, is very professional in what they do, and obviously they, they understand their system really well. But uh, we knew that this was going to be a battle. We knew that this series was going to be tough. That's why home court advantage was so, so important. And um, the fans really showed out tonight. And it's amazing to play here in Climate Pledge, I said it earlier, but we haven't been back here since since 2018. And that's the thing that I remember most about those playoffs was walking out and just the crowd erupting. Um, I I would hate to be on the other side of that. <laughs> Thanks. And then, Joel, um, kind of just walk me through the final two minutes. You guys are down one and then being able to shut them down and execute on offense. Yeah, I mean, every time out, um, every time we had our – little huddle of get stops, get stops, rebound, get stops. Um, we were able to do that. And um, on offense, because we were able to get stops, we were able to set up our offense um, and execute down the stretch. And um, I mean, that's, that's, that's playoff basketball. It's being able to execute on both ends of the floor in crunch time. And we were able to do that, but we definitely fed off the crowd. We fed off each other. Um, and literally it was just keep on the stops, get stops, get stops. Take a question from Christos. Um, Christos, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hello, ladies. Congratulations on the win. Joel, first of all, great dessert. Oh, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you, for 35 minutes, your, your shots didn't fall in, but your teammates always pass the ball to you. In the last five minutes, what was the biggest change? And what was your mindset in the last five minutes? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Just trying to get to my spots. Um, it definitely helps when your teammates and coaches are telling you, you know, come get the ball and encouraging me. Um, I know the spots on the floor I like, um, and I was able to get there and, you know, great screens. Um, yeah, I mean, they were they were going in. I felt good, uh, even in the first half, the shots I, I was taking. But I think getting to the free throw line early in the second half, too, allowed me kind of get a little rhythm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, shots went in and, um, yeah. Thank you very much. And for your story, wins like this, the way that you want tonight, what does the – does it represent about Storm, about the basketball that you would like to play in the playoffs? Um, wins like tonight just show that we're we're relentless. You know, we know that basketball is a game of runs, and Washington had theirs, and it was a pretty late run, and we were able to kind of combat that and come back and uh, make a run of our own, and and just know that. The, the roster that we have, we trust one another so much offensively and defensively uh, to know that we're going to make big plays down the stretch. Thank you very much. And we'll wrap up with M. Nadler. M, go ahead. Hey, I want to start off uh, just uh, asking Jewel. So before you came on, Noe gave a quote. She said something uh, basically like in previous years, you might not have been able to push through, you know, the first three quarters. You had to have that sort of fourth quarter explosion. Just have you felt a personal growth uh, in your game to be able to get to that point, to be able to do that? Yeah, I mean, I'm eight years in. If I haven't grown, then that's a problem. Oh my God, you're so old. I'm old, man. You know, I'm a vet. Like, we're vets on this team, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, that's the, the player I'm trying to grow into, the person I want to be. Uh, it's just growth. I want to evolve. And so, yeah, I mean, as a rookie, you get frustrated. You're not making shots, right? Like, you get frustrated. You know, you're used to things being smooth and things like that. But uh, you've been in this league a, a while. You understand uh, the flow of the game. You understand who you are, uh, your teammates, time, score, all those things. So, uh, yeah, I would hope that I've, I've grown. <laughs> of course. Um, Stu, so I wanted to ask, you know, um, Jill obviously had 12 points in the fourth quarter. You had 12 in the third. 
Um, just what is it in your game to be able to, you know, take over for a quarter? And then when your teammate, you know, catches fire, just step back and be able to uh, help on that. Um, I think, you know, Jewel, Jewel touched on it a little bit before, but but just the the trust that we have in one another. Um, we both know that when we get into a good rhythm, uh, you know, it feels like everything is going to go in. And, and having that confidence in the shots that we shoot um, and just knowing that, you know, whether I was the one making the shots or Jewel was the one making the shots or, or Gabby was the one making the shots, we're continuing to make plays for one another to, to make these things happen. Um, and, and Jewel was clutch big time down the stretch. Um, and she just continued to stick with it. I think that, you know, it doesn't matter if, if shots don't go in, she has to continue to keep shooting them because eventually the, the tide is going to even out. And and it did, and she's clutch. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Get back here. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Let's. I, I have a good idea.